Welcome to the next episode of Flintco Talks. It's your boy Dano, live here in the Austin office. I'm with uh, my good friend and uh, partner in crime, Orlando Hernandez. Orlando, how are you today, brother? I'm wonderful. It's good to see you, man. We're here to talk about Construction Inclusion Week, right? This is a big week for us. Flintco's been had this week marked on the calendar, right? We've been performing activities for several years to make sure our folks are included, make sure they know they're important to us. Uh, in the last Flintco Talks podcast, we sat down with Pat Coleman, who's our new Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and she likes to add, and belonging of our sister company, Albarisi. And it just so happens that Tuesday of Inclusion Week is Belonging Day. Orlando, I wanted to ask you, why is belonging important to us here at Flintco? Well, I, th- I think belonging is important for us at Flintco because, you know, to, to truly create a culture of where you have all your employees feel like they, they are part of the company, you, you have to have that belonging, you know, and it starts all the way from the CEO and president of the company to the labors that you have working out in the field. I mean, when it comes down to it, the people that are in the field are the ones that actually do the work. They create the jobs. You know, uh, our office personnel are, are wonderful. You know, it's great to, to be able to, to go after contracts and to be able to, to find all this work. But where, you know, the rubber meets the road is really for the folks that are outside day in, day in and day out, going through it and grinding it and performing work and, and getting things done out in the field. You think folks work better for us when they feel like they belong? Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's uh, too many times, you know, throughout my career and, and in growing up, I felt always as the outsider, mm-hmm. uh, especially when you didn't feel like you had a voice or you were able to talk to anybody. You know, you would go into work and you just kind of went through through the day, through the number, did what you had to do and, and go home. But it, it, it really when you feel that you create value within your company and and you're part of it, it, it really is tremendous. And I mean, I, I, I really can't talk, can't speak enough about it. So you've been here about five years now, is that right? Yes, sir. About five years. So over the past five years, if you look at Flintco five years ago, starting Construction Inclusion Week and you look at us today, what are some things that you've seen that have changed that have uh, hopefully going to help people feel like they belong? I think one of the biggest things that I've seen is that we we have gone in our hiring process uh, because predominantly Hispanic and Latino people are the ones that are that are out working uh, day in and day out. When you look at it statistically uh, through safety incidents that occur, the the majority of them are Spanish speaking people. So we felt that maybe part of the problem was maybe a communication problem. Maybe they mm-hmm. weren't understanding. They didn't know. Uh, they were taking maybe risks that they shouldn't have done. So for that reason, Flinko went out and, and hired people that were bilingual. We've taken the time to uh, to, to translate uh, many of our forms to make sure that when they come into the office and they have questions or, or there are things that they want to go over, that, that we're approachable, that we're able to talk to them in a language that they understand, that they're able to communicate, and that they feel that they have a voice. So that, that way, if there is an issue outside, you know, they, they can bring it up. They, they know that they're taken seriously and that we'll try to uh, mitigate as many of those issues as we can before they become problems. Yeah, I love what you said about approachable, right? That's such a big part of our business, right? We can't build projects without good communication, without good planning. And if, we've, if the folks in the field don't feel like they can come to- talk to the folks in the office, we're never going to get there, right? And it takes, it, it takes effort. It takes intentional effort to, to be approachable and to make sure uh, that, that folks are welcome whenever they come into the office or even when we go out in the field, right? I think about uh, the two years I spent on the project in Mexicali, right? I was the guy that was the outsider. I was in a different country, not speaking the language uh, and walking out and I always felt like I was welcome, right? The folks that were there, they always welcomed me and I would try to speak broken Spanish, right? And they'd say, no, 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 no. And they'd correct me and, you know, in, in the working together, we both got better, right? I could communicate well with them. They could communicate well with me. And all of a sudden, you know, we're drilling piers like we're supposed to and pouring concrete when we're supposed to. Well, and just like you said, you were, you were putting forth the effort. You know, when, when you put forth that effort, and, and one of the things that, uh, that we just recently implemented here in Austin that I was hearing about is that we've uh, started a, a class uh, to teach people how to speak Spanish and, and made efforts to have people go out to the field to be able to, to speak Spanish with people who are predominantly Spanish speaking, to be able to get that communication back and forth. And, and just like you said, be approachable. You know, many times I think, you know, throughout your day, uh, we understand you get stressed, you know, you've got budget constraints, you've got schedule that's, you know, on your mind. Take the time that when somebody comes into the office, look them in the eye, smile, 
put your hand out, shake their hand, get mm-hmm. to know them by their first name. And when you when you achieve that level of respect with people, you can get so much more out of them. You know, they feel just like I said, like they have a voice, like they're part of the team. Mm-hmm. And it really makes a difference. Yeah, at that point, you are a part, right? When you're acknowledged, it's better than just walking in and kind of looking around and not seeing a familiar face and having to walk out, right? When you can walk into a place and know that somebody's going to say something to you, greet you, ask what's going on, what can they help with? It's Absolutely. definitely going to help. So we share a job trailer together now, right? We're on the same project out at the Murr building at uh, UT Pickle campus. When we think about belonging for the folks uh, at that project, right? This super intense project, right? Big clean room type project in an existing building, lots of complicated systems. What can guys like you and me do to help this belonging actually manifest on our job site so that everybody comes in, can just be brought into the fold and feel like they're going to be part of the team that's going to deliver this complicated job? Well, you know, uh, have them come into the office like they like they do right now. You know, they sign paperwork. We greet them, uh, most of them on a first name basis. You know, Chris does an, an outstanding jo- uh, job of coordinating work with them and to be able to go in, you know, both in the office and out in the field, meet with them, walk through the process, know what they're doing, make sure that if there is issues that and they voice their opinion, that we listen to what they're saying, that we, you know, we understand. Uh, let's be honest, you don't have to be a college graduate to understand work and how it, uh, how you perform it and what you need to do when you've been doing it for 20 or 30 years. You know, these craftsmen, these master craftsmen, are people that are extremely knowledgeable of what they do. And Chris listens to what they say because if one of them is telling them, we can't do the sequence in this way, I need to change this you know, to a different manner, uh, he understands and he, he values their opinion enough to know that uh, what they're saying is important. And, and he takes hold of that. You know, and it's just, I mean, like I said, can't say enough about those kind of things. Yeah, when you really take the opportunity to trust someone else and even what they're going to tell you, right? If, if you're talking to the master craftsman, and talking about the, where the plumbing line goes or whatever, right? Validating their opinion, saying, hey, this is now going to be the plan. That's exactly right, right? And that's belonging breeds belonging, right? If people feel like they belong, what are they going to want to do? Yeah, absolutely. Come along with me, man. We're going to make yeah. this happen. How does, how does the belonging aspect uh, play a part in your role as the safety professional on site? Uh, well, for me, I mean... Uh, so much has changed throughout my career when I first started and, and where I am now. Uh, you know, it, uh, <laughs> it's funny to say, but uh, I remember being the young guy in the trailer and now I'm the old guy in the trailer. Uh, <laughs> I'm right there with you, brother. <laughs> but throughout my career, uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel, you know, as a, as a young Hispanic man that I had a voice. Uh, you know, let's, let's be honest here. You know, 20, 30 years ago, predominantly all the faces in the office were all white. You know, and, and, and to come in from, from that and, and to hear stories, you know, uh, Dan and I were talking earlier kind of off, uh, off to the side of my father telling stories that 40 years ago he had to teach himself how to read drawings because nobody was willing to do it. And, and, and to see him go from that journey to a senior general superintendent in charge of billion dollars worth of work uh, and, and to see and, and sadly to say that was only 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, we've come a long way. We still have a long way to go. But we come a long way in a short amount of time. And, and I think because we have come along and, and Flinko has adopted this, this cultural change, it really makes a difference in, in all the aspects of work that we do. Uh, but, you know, having me in the office, you know, and, and something as simple as being able to speak to, to people that are predominantly Spanish speaking only and to get them to understand what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? How are we going to get hurt? What do we need? Do you need anything from me? You know, is there anything I can do to make your job easier? You know, your ears kind of perk up when you hear those kind of things because, like you said, you add value. And, and when you add value and you feel that you have a voice, you know, it, it makes the job so much easier and it gets done so much faster that you get to the point where it's not even work anymore. Mm-hmm. No, that's exactly right. It's, I love hearing the story about your dad. I had the privilege to work with him for a couple of years on that project in Mexico. And if, if you think about Johnny 40 years ago sneaking into the trailer to read drawings and try to teach himself how to read drawings and what he's doing today... It's, it's truly a testament to, to, to the person he is, right? And he's instilled that in you also. And you've, you've continued and marching in the footsteps and one of those guys that's in the office and calling the shots and a big, a big player on our team as well. So it's, it's great to see that in you, right? And I know he's proud of you and what you've become for us as well. When you think about what you want our listeners to hear today or what you want our listeners to take away, 
What's what's the biggest takeaway for you to make sure that we're gonna we're gonna walk out of here and we're gonna be a part of that belonging? You know, I, I think a lot of uh, the things that Flinko does on a day to day basis, and even the bigger picture kind of things, uh, really try to encom- encompass uh, our culture. You know, we we recently did an, an orientation video. Uh, you know, there was a big production for Flinko. Mm-hmm. We did it both in English and Spanish. And we wanted to get it right so much so that when I was asked to do the Spanish portion of it, I, I kind of raised my hand and said, I'm, I'm not the guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spanish isn't my, my, uh, my predominant language. You know, I spoke English uh, first and then learned Spanish as I got older. And I wasn't comfortable. And I wanted to make sure, and, and we all did, we wanted to make sure that that message was clearly conveyed to everybody. So for that reason, we had, we had asked Sam Escobar, uh, whose Spanish was, was his first language, to come in and do the translation part to make sure that we didn't miss a step anywhere and that it was a clear message across the board to everybody that that's how important, uh, you know, the Spanish portion of it was that our orientation was done correctly. Yeah, I think that's big because everybody deserves the same chance to have the safety orientation and hear it and understand what it's like, right? That's the biggest proponent for us is folks that come work on the job site go home in the same condition that they showed up in, right? And taking the time to to get Sam in the house and get him to translate it into the, like you're saying, the native language that he learned to speak. He's going to know the slang. He's going to know the contractions, all the different things to make the words work so that people can understand it. Well, and they would pick up on that. I mean, you know, it's very easy, easy, easily to distinguish that if we had cut corners, if we had done things we weren't supposed to, if we hadn't put forth all the effort in that really good orientation video, then when you watch it, you're going to be like, well, do they really care? You know, I mean, they, they got a guy over there that doesn't even speak Spanish, you know, trying to do the orientation video and stuff. And that wasn't the case. We made sure that we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't cut any corners on it. We wanted to make sure that it was done correctly, was done right. And I, and I think it's, it's paid dividends for us. I mean, you, you go through and you watch the video and you see them be able to look through and see exactly what's important to us and make sure that our key values are ingrained at the beginning of a job before someone starts. It, it makes all the difference. It really does. We had a alignment meeting earlier this week with one of our trade partners and we asked them, you know, kind of what can we do better? And we got, uh, you know, happy to say good feedback of their workers saying, hey, it's it's safe to come in the Flint Co. trailer. It's safe to come in. It's safe to turn in JHAs. It's safe to ask questions. You know, and I feel like we're working really hard on that belonging. I feel like we're, we're doing a good job. So I wanted to say good job to you, man. Appreciate all you do. Thanks for being here today. Construction Inclusion Week. Um, let's make sure that the people at our job sites feel like they belong. Absolutely. Thanks, Orlando. Have a great day, my brother. All right. Thanks. Bye. It's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to ask for help. If you are struggling with suicidal thoughts or you think someone you know is, please don't wait. Call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. To learn how to get support for mental health, drug, and alcohol issues, visit findsupport.gov. To locate treatment facilities or providers, visit findtreatment.gov. Gov, or call their national helpline at 800-662-HELP. Thanks again for listening and see you next time.